the worst type of morality would be the worst possible suffering for every human being. Every other scenario from that would be marginally better if we want to. Uh, yeah, but it says that in the Bible. He hasn't discovered anything new that was written 2,000 years ago. Well, the Bible is a very bizarre set of moral uh, yeah. directions. It says, it says that God put a conscience in people to understand wrong from right. That's where that, yeah, that guy Bible hasn't written anything. The Bible has a bunch of erroneous set of uh, rights and wrongs. The Ten Commandments, the first three are all about belief in God. Right. How does that have anything to do with No, no, it's the first four. four. The first four. four. Let's get there. Sure. Okay. Next six or six. Six. Love for your neighbor. Depending on who's first of the Ten Commandments. And it's love for your neighbor. Don't kill, don't steal, don't do anything wrong. Well, why should I love my neighbor if he's a, a pedophile? Oh, for sure. No. Um, it, right, so, so, so where do you get yeah, that no, justice? People don't want it. Where do you get the concept of justice? It, it's, 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 it's consequential. Well, it's, um, right? it's, he, he's having so how, how do you decide what consequence is right? You're interrupting before I have a chance to answer. Okay, where do I get that from? Oh, okay. I, get that from? Yeah, I was trying to film you. Sorry, but I um, ran out of space. I'm starting from a base. I want to maximize human health and conscious life form. What's well being? Where do you get that concept? Well, there's many forms of well being, for example, health. The doctor knows that uh, it's probably better not to have a brain tumor than it is to not have a brain tumor. Right? So, so where do you get the concept of right and wrong? You actually will agree with science. If, it, if you start from the worst possible scenario, the worst suffering for all conscious life, 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 life and every other scenario uh, that's better from that. But evolution, evolution is predicated on, on, on years of death and suffering only to have the best flash out. So that suffering is good in the end because it leads to a better, more evolved a more perfected universe. There's a difference between evolutionary processes and the type of social system we want to create in order to maximize. Right. Right. So animals killing animals, See you later. people killing people, how's that doing? Yeah. So animals, in animals, in the, in the, animals in the wild, they will kill other animals to survive and to evolve. And that's good in the end because we get a better result. There's a reason for why they behave the way they do. And then right? there's a reason why humans behave the way they do. Exactly. You know? so, it's not divinely so, inspired. Oh, now you're claiming there's divine inspiration. No, I'm there is. <laughs> see, you see, then, then humans are no better than animals. It depends on what uh, depends on what uh, what claim you make. Because see, originally when, when in Genesis, I know you don't believe it, but originally in Genesis, God created men and women and animals to be vegan. Did you guys know that? To be vegan. Vegan. Yeah, I pronounced it wrong. Excuse me, it's my third language. All right. So He created them to be vegan. All right. Man was supposed to eat plants bearing fruit, and animals were supposed to eat green plants. Right. And when sin came in, according to the Bible, that's when they start killing and eating each other. Because you believe in the talking snake, yes. Yeah, well, you know, it's not a stretch because that snake was safe. It's not a stretch. Okay, anyway, let's continue. But anyway, so, so, God created the world in perfect balance with peace. And it was sin that introduced all the bad things that we see today. But if you think from the perspective of evolution, all the death and suffering and illness and disease it's actually a good thing because it's weeding out the weak and the suffering and everything that's not perfect to give room for the perfect to evolve. So that's a good thing. But see, if I put it that way, then then it's all good. Everything the world is messed up about is actually a perfect machine that makes evolution what it is and, and results in a better place. Do you think that's the only way to interpret that? Uh, absolutely. So, so because I believe in evolution, I should think that the killing and God. and suffering of uh, humans and animals, other animals. It's a good thing. No, I don't say I don't say you should think it's a good thing. I say you say why do you think it's a bad thing? I started with that. Well, because because I've suffered in yes. my life and I know that it is unpleasant, and so right. I know that other people when they suffer it is unpleasant right. for them, and I don't want that for other people because I don't want it for myself. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I wouldn't okay. want people suffering. You know that's a bad thing. Of course, no, nobody. Well, most people don't. My hope for restoring the suffering. And restoring the well-being is in God. Right, I understand right? that. And so mine I want people to experience that peace and restoration too. Exactly, I agree. I don't yeah, want yeah. people to suffer. I want people to die. Right. Right. Yeah. But if you take evolution and say, well, if we stopped the weak from dying and suffering, because the weak are suffering. Like you look at a weak animal out in the wild, is born with like only three legs, okay. and it, it's, yeah. it's 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 miserable. It can't move. It can't eat. It can't. But, but I'm not saying the history of the Earth is moral. That evolution is moral. It's just what happened. Yeah. So 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 then nothing is wrong in the world. Well, no, it sure is. Because people, we we've created the concepts of right and wrong, and so 
we so then uh, oh yeah right go ahead go ahead so we have come to the conclusion that suffering is wrong mm -hmm. and that promoting health and well-being and happiness is right Right. Because so, that's what we want to do. So, that's what we feel is so. The, good. So, so the, the concept of right and wrong and suffering and health and well-being, whatever, is created by men. Of course. So how do you know it's right? Just what, what, what do you mean? Well, how do I know this is a bike? Because that's the word we've created for that object. So we've created the word wrong to be things that we don't want. And I've just explained to you how I came to the conclusion that I don't want suffering because I know that suffering is bad. I know that I don't enjoy. Enjoy it, right, right, right. So, but what if in the one leads from things, the other? Like, say, say that I'm suffering with you, right? Like, okay. we have an illness of some kind, or we were, we were plagued by cancer, right? And and it's it's bad, it's wrong, it's horrible. You know, I've yeah. had members of the family die from stroke, from heart failure, whatever. Like, right. different. Definitely. It's it's bad, and people still die. Yeah. And there's disease in young people, children, like children's hospital. That's that's bad. Right. But. If you look at evolution, then that's a natural process. It so is a natural process, but natural that doesn't mean it's a moral process. Yeah, but okay. see, see, what you do then is you take some facts and then you start to interpret them morally. Okay. Well, you, I right, so where do you get the concept of right and wrong? Well, we see, created it just like we created see, the concept matter, of fight. Matter cannot give rise itself by itself to intangible things. Because if you talk about evolution, here's the formula for evolution, by the way, and for Big Bang. Nobody times nothing. Yeah. equals everything by chance over millions of years. Well, no, no, that's, that's not what it is. The evolution is actually, there's random mutations in genes, and the ones that are most advantageous for, are selected for by natural selection. That's a big difference from what you just so said. So natural selection means, all it means that the healthiest survive. It doesn't mean that they evolve. It just, right. It's a statement of fact that, that yeah, they survive. That the they survive. survive. It doesn't necessarily mean... Yeah, they're the adapting to an environment. And they survive. It doesn't mean they evolve. That means they're just the strongest. Right. So, so that's not by chance. Because if it was by chance, then there would be an equal number of unhealthy so and healthy things. Are so the, the, mutations the mutations are random. But the natural, by so but that's the by chance. Yes, but the natural selection process itself is not random. I mean, you put, you know, you, five just dogs wait, just wait. Do you understand that? That the natural selection process is not random? Of course. Of okay, course. That okay, just okay. means that the fittest survive yes. in any given environment. It's a non-random so, selection so if process. I'm a, if I'm a thick, hairy dog and I'm in the Arctic, I'll probably have a chance of survival more than a chihuahua right. because they're cold. For they're going to sure. die. They're going to freeze to death. Yes. Right? So all that that means is that the fittest survival. Now, go back to a mutation. Aaron, definition of a mutation. Um, I just had a tea. I'm good. But thank you. Definition of a mutation is a, a mistake in the reproduction of, of the DNA code. It's just an error. And all these mistakes uh, lead to debilitation. And Sorry, did you say debilitation? Yeah, like it's, it's some kind of impairment of the organism. So when, whenever well, the DNA code so doesn't sometimes copy it's properly, beneficial. It's not always an impairment. Well, I would argue that scientifically. Okay. I would argue that scientifically. And, and you can look at the Dr. Werner. I promised to, to, to you the book. Dr. Werner, get in the so, beginning so you're there was information. That, just wait, if there's two dogs in the Arctic and they have a mutation, that their son no, has, saying, that their, just wait, that their child has a mutation to have a thicker coat, you're saying that would be an impairment? No, no, no. What I'm saying is, is that's natural selection. Right. It's the thicker coat survives, and therefore... Right. But the, I'm just the, saying some mutations can result in things that look, aren't see, an impairment. This is, this is not mutation, what you just said. This is this is DNA coat. And I, let me right. explain what I mean. But if there's a mutation to make well, it let me more No, no, beneficial. that's not a mutation. Here's what happens. Okay. In the DNA coat, there's information for all kinds of things. Long hair, short hair, blue eyes, sure. green eyes, whatever. Okay. Yes. When you take two dogs and put them together, mm -hmm. there's actually, and it's genetically proven, that there's actually a decrease in the information from generation to generation. So you take this DNA information and this DNA information and some hybrid of it results, yeah. and it results in, in a less information than originally in those two dogs. The DNA code... You mean, you mean example, like less information than would have been in one of the two dogs? Or like no, no, just, that, just like, that there's half... Like your DNA, kind of did you know that your DNA code, like if you got married and had right. a son, your mm -hmm. DNA code it's possible contains a gene for having black offspring. Okay. Like yeah, African American yeah, looking sure. people, right? Yeah. Or Chinese or Arab or whatever. Because that's all embedded in the DNA code. Now, when you mix DNA codes that are like each other, if you say put a, a bunch of dogs in the Arctic and some are short haired, some are long haired, whatever, when they mate, mm -hmm. the ones with the long hair have a likelier chance of survival because they have warmth. I'm freezing right now and they, they would be the ones surviving and I'd be out. Right, yeah. yeah. So that is natural selection and the fact that the, the ones that have DNA code, and that's where like the other ones get weeded out, and this one with the <laughs> DNA code for that long hair 
passes it on and the generations keep inheriting. Right, right. right. A mutation is when you have an alteration and then... That could make the hair longer. That could make the hair longer or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you are admitting that evolution is true. No, I am admitting and saying that genetically, when you look at... In the, it's like it's like having Excel, right? You have Excel in a program. You want to install Excel. And all that it has is just the code for Excel. So if you install it and there's an error in the installation, it doesn't work properly. But what, the, what, what, gene, what geneticists have proven is that you cannot install Excel with enough mistakes that it becomes Word or that it becomes PowerPoint or that it becomes Outlook. And so if you look not. at the genetic code for DNA, there's no more information that can be added. It, only, it actually only decreases over the DNA life cycle, but it decreases in such ways depending on what the environment to adapt to the environment. That's why they survive there. But they don't evolve. They decrease in information. So the original dog, for example, that would have been created had the DNA code for all these types of dogs that we see. But because of the environments where they went, different genes oh, I see separated. What you're I see you see what, what I'm saying? saying? Yeah, yeah, so that's if you true. start with Excel, and you go out, you might end up with some bastardized program of Excel that doesn't right, really right. work the way it's intended. For sure. That has genetically been proven. You can go and read that even from non-Christians. Mm -hmm. So that is a huge, that is the biggest problem with the theory of evolution today. And they don't have an alternative. Mutation, on the other hand, is that mistake in the code. You can go read about it. I'm like, I'm not making this up. But see, Darwin didn't have DNA when he came up with his theory. That's true. So you can go with, you can go to uh, creation.com or org, I forget what it is, one of the extensions, and you can read about it from scientific, from people with Nobel Prize type mindset. These are not schmucks. Okay. Right? And, and read and evaluate because our bodies, as well as for the animals and the plants, are truly, um, it's, it's like the hardware and the software. That's why he says in the beginning there was information. For these molecules... Wait, who says in the beginning? Uh, Dr. Werner Gitt. Oh, okay. About genetics. Okay. Geneticism. Because without the information, it's like if I have an alphabet and I have no language, that alphabet is completely meaningless. I can write a word that says P-A-C-E. What does that mean to you? Pace. Pace, right? Like making a pace. Yeah. Yeah. That's in English. In Romanian, that's peace. That means peace. Okay. Right? Because I have a language to interpret. And that's the same thing with the DNA code. All of that is, is useless without the information because you have the hardware and you need the software to run it. It's like a computer. It's truly digital. So if you go and study DNA, I'm talking just genetics, on the basis of genetics, you cannot prove evolution whatsoever. In fact, it's the biggest goal. I'm not an evolutionary scientist, so I, I, I can't argue the... the See, it's an area of interest of mine. Okay. And, I, and I've read on yeah. it. And I would venture to say that uh, the, the higher the higher esteemed... Uh, Scientists in the scientific community would uh, be able to explain away your, your. I've attended lots of debates between those okay. and the others, okay. and listened to their arguments. And, and I can tell you, you know, even like um, in in this whole genetic uh, scientific community that they're looking at genetics, it is difficult to, like I said, in, in a vernacular, create word from Excel by mistakes because it doesn't work. It stops. It crashes. So mutations, what, what, what they're saying is over billions of years, the perfection that we see today is products, I, I call it is products of billions and billions of mistakes. Whereas we know that 99% of all mutations I, I, I lead to... I don't know what you're calling mistakes. And it's really he's, not calling, he's calling mutations mistakes. Mutations, okay. mistakes. Mistakes in the reproduction of the DNA code. That's okay. what they are. All right. That's what they are. They, they just copy it wrong. And 99% and of these are harmful. And some of them are inert. They're like, well, you know, this reason really didn't affect anything vital, but still a mistake. You know. And so, some of them are beneficial. Very, very, very few. Yeah, very, definitely very, very rarely. So, That's why so, it takes billions and years Yeah, but if you take, and as I explained to your friend Matthew, right? Or mm -hmm. I forget that. Yeah, Matthew, Matthew, and your name? Aaron. As I explained to your friend, we now enter the, the uh, realm of statistics and, and trying to calculate what it would take mm -hmm to have these random mutations, which are very, 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 very rare, occur over a period of time. And to have, because there's thousands and hundreds of thousands of conditions that have to exist for life to actually begin in the first place. And if you just take the random probability of a few of those, mm -hmm. it, is, it is astronomically, it gets astronomically ridiculous in terms of the odds of it happening. And these are by people that are not Christians. I'm just talking... I, 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 
Yeah. So you, I, I was just going to say that in all the planets on all the, you know, understand there's hundreds of billions of star systems inside hundreds of billions of galaxies. So the chances of these conditions happening on multiple planets in the universe is actually fairly good. Mm -hmm. Multiple, but not on one like Earth. What, what do you mean? This is one in the universe. But this is one of the multiple. Right, of course. So maybe it's going to happen somewhere, and we would only be able to have this argument on one that it happened on, because we wouldn't exist if it didn't happen. Right, so, so I'm telling you that the odds of that happening, and all the... Like You're the saying the odds of it happening in the universe are small? Well, I'm just talking about Earth. Right no, now. but I'm talking about the universe. Yeah, in the universe. Yeah. Right, because that's that's the yeah, cause, stage that cause, we're on. Because for, for life to exist and for the Earth to be the way it is and for everything, like, there's an amazing order and structure out there. It's amazing precision. Everything works. Like, your your um, the way that your immune system works, the way that there's a lot of problems with that, all the diseases we get. Of course, that's because we're dying, because of the sin. <laughs> well, that is something you cannot prove But see, if you say there's a lot of problems with that, then how can evolution be true? because we're regressing. Okay, look, there's a big difference between... Uh, let's grant for you, for the sake of argument, that evolution is false. Okay? I don't agree with it. Okay. Um, it doesn't, again, I've already said this to you, it doesn't prove that God created the universe, it doesn't prove that creationist science is corrected in any form. With that theory, there's a lot of problems. And, and in my mind, if I was just to be scientifically objective and choose between what I want to... And I don't believe you are because I think you're filtering all that science that you're reading through your creationist perspective. But you have a worldview as well, when and you're man, filtering everything, when well, whether you realize it or not, you're filtering, filtering everything through, your through world. the evidence that I read. So, yes. so what Let's you're saying is a very so arrogant so statement, is that your worldview is the only objective so one, and that mine is it's perverted. It's not my worldview, it's, it's based on evidence. They said that. See, God. but that, but see, man, you cannot prove to me that like you're, because you, you are coming with a presupposition that that is the accurate frame of reference, and everything, and everybody else, everybody else, what is needed? Look, I'm talking to you about evidence. Like, for the last hour, I've discussed to you genetic evidence to challenge the theory yeah, okay, of evolution. But, yeah, you can challenge right? the theory so of evolution. evolution. Just wait, just wait, but he was asking for evidence that God created the universe. Okay, right. Like he said, but, but, let's but say we, that evolution to, is wrong. We need to get there step by step, right? But, no, the, so, uh, so, evolution has nothing yeah, to do with so, the God So, if evolution is wrong, yeah. then what other alternatives do we have to well, the world Well, if there's no together. evidence for evolution and there's no evidence right. for God, then we don't have a theory. We don't know. Okay. Right? right. Okay. Right. So there's See, no reason to jump so, to so God. So there's three, there's three alternatives. One, well, no, evolution. there's not three alternatives. There's infinite alternatives, okay, infinite. and there's no and let's there's talk, no evidence talk, for any of them, the according to you. Know. Let's talk about the ones we know. Well, okay, I least. can give you ten more that you're okay, not tell talking me, about. Tell me. Um, the flying spaghetti monster created the universe. Okay. Okay. Right. So where's the evidence for that? I don't know. That? I haven't studied the flying spaghetti. Maybe aliens created. Maybe yeah. whatever. There, there's what another one. Is, what I'm saying Have you ever watched you, Ancient Aliens? You, there's actually a lot of evidence that aliens are what caused humans to be on this planet. They seeded our life form. You have come to me on the basis of Evolution. No. He came to you on the our, our basis of... Our science has nothing to do with evolution. But you brought it up. That's what you were saying. Oh, no, you brought up about the age of the Earth. You, you, you asked me for my my worldview yeah, as to right. how... And you said it's evolution. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's what you believe. Yeah, but our sign is about religion. Yeah. About the claims because that religious people make that have no right. substantiation. Right. So, yeah. I would Do argue... Do because we're about to start the service. Uh, no, I'm really not. You're... you're yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, everything, everything, everything ultimately is basically based on, on some degree of faith. Because you, you, you don't know yeah. everything. I used to so, at some point, you accept. It depends what you you mean by faith, but it's like the, the idea is to believe things based on how much evidence there is. So the more evidence there is, the stronger your belief would be. Bingo, it's what I was trying to prove to your friend. So if you look in the Bible, can I put on my it says, which is not proof of anything. But, but hang on a second. Like, you, you're going, like, it's just we're talking about belief system, world systems, or like points of view, or like uh, your, your, um, your, what do you call that? Uh, your frame of reference, let's call it that way, or your your understanding, how you how you pull the world together for yourself, right? Okay. So, so in the Bible, which you don't believe, but that's okay, that's just, I have a Judeo-Christian world view, right? So in that world view, in the Bible it says, it never says have blind faith. It never says believe just in... in, in it says, here's why you should believe. Right. And it says, on the basis of these things that the Bible calls facts and true historical accounts. Now, I know you don't believe it, but just hear me out. Hear me out. Yes, and the same thing with you. You've taken a lot of things that a lot of people have said through a lot of different things, and you've accumulated a worldview of some kind. And you believe them at some level, because you're not a genetic scientist, you're not a physicist, you're not a chemist, and, you don't have, and I don't have to be. I don't have to be an expert in everything and know everything, but I can rely on 
other teachers and professors and, and, and experts and people and witnesses and things like that mm -hmm. to prove to me that events that occurred in the Bible were, were, were authentic. Right, but what about physical evidence? Yeah, there is physical evidence. That, there is okay, like manuscripts. Well, which thing we're There's manuscripts. About, but... Like for example, let's take Plato. Or like, no, Homer. Homer. There's probably about 15 or 20 manuscripts from which it was pieced together. Okay. With an accuracy that is not very valid. Like in terms of variation. Okay. When you take the Bible and say, say like the New Testament, there's over 15,000 copies which, between which the, the variability of those writings are 99.9% .9 accurate in terms of like manuscripts of rewriting. You're about like all the Gospels? Like the yeah, the Gospels, the Dead Sea Scrolls, all that put together has an accuracy of 99.9% accurate in terms of the transcription. You mean just like in terms of confirming each other's stories? Yeah, yeah, like it being identical to each other in text. Right, but there's lots of contradictions right. even in the Bible. I don't think that they're 99 percent. Um, yeah, which is self, what you call contradictions, but they are not. Well, when they when the two stories are talking about the same event and say two different things about it, that's by definition a contradiction. Have you seen the movie Vantage Point? Uh, I have not. No. So there's uh, the premise of the movie is like. Different people see an event, mm -hmm. so there's this. Uh, and they would I, give contradictory. No, they um, give their point of view, which, is, of the which event. is both true but sounds contradictory. So like, if, if, but, say, but saying that, uh, like Jesus' resurrection, saying there was two people found him, or that five people found him, that that's not, that's not. Um, well, show that, me that, in the Bible that that con show, show me have, have you read the Bible personally? I can't remember. Your friend said he has, but have um, you read it? I've read most of it. Most of it? Um, okay, some of the books that. in the Old Testament I kind of skip because they're boring. It's a little, but, it's a little but, um, the Old Testament. The, I, I, know, I know that I, I read the Torah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But anyways, but what I'm trying to say... There's a good YouTube video called uh, Clues Show Bible Contradictions, and that very beautifully illustrates what uh, Aaron was talking about. Right, so you've taken someone's... And then I can show you another video that beautifully explains all of this. So I right? probably find a lot of uh, uh, evidential errors on it. What, what I'm trying to tell you is that you could go... Because I was on your side. You see, not about when I was 18, up to when I was 18, this is where I was standing. And I was on your side before. So yeah. So, 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 so what I'm trying to tell you is that in my mind, you know, in fact, why am I a believer today? It's not because of me. It's because God opened my eyes. So, so why do you think that he doesn't do that for everyone and turn everyone into a believer? Is that what I'm telling you right now? Why do you guys believe? Why don't you believe? Well, no, but you're saying that God opened your eyes. I'm yes, waiting absolutely. for God to open my eyes. I pray that he does. Okay. That is my deepest longing. For sure. for him to go to if he is real, then that is my deepest longing as well. I would love for God to prove to himself. Absolutely. In fact, it would be amazing. I, in fact, I encourage you to say, God, reveal yourself to me. This week, okay. this week, I'm going to pray for you. Okay. And you, you sincerely say, God, I don't know if you exist or you don't, but you reveal yourself to me. Ask him. If you sincerely seek him, you will find him. Okay. Well, you'll definitely see us back here if we do, in fact, uh, change our mind and find uh, the invisible man in the sky. All I'm saying is, if you need something, you say, Lord, God, I don't, I don't know who you are. I don't know even how to begin praying. Be honest about it. It's like, I, I am, I've, I've got all these beliefs. Okay, and think we haven't done that? We both come you from have? religious backgrounds. You come from a religious background? Yeah, I went to Catholic school. Catholic school. Catholic, okay. Yeah. So, let me ask you again. You put it out there to God say, Lord, I really want to know the truth. And I want to know it without a shadow of a doubt. Right? Like, because you want to, right? Ultimately, all, everybody wants truth. They don't want to believe a lie. They don't want to live a lie. I don't think they actually do. Sorry. Anyway, that's a different, different subject. We can argue philosophically. But I would encourage you. I'll pray for you this week. What's your name again? Aaron. Aaron, okay. So you, and, and like, I'm not just saying to you, but to God, if he's listening. Um, to, in, in order for him to show himself to me, he has to give me some physical evidence. Because I won't believe an experience I have if there's no evidence because okay. there's a possibility that my experience is incorrect because people so, hallucinate people have incorrect okay. interpretations of reality all the time i i'm gonna pray that god reveal himself to you now how he decides to do that okay you know it's up oh, to obviously him. Right. it would be if he was because reading. see god is not accountable to me I, oh, no, I, I never said he was. Yeah, I was just, yeah, I was just yeah. if, getting if, that out there. Absolutely. I, I, I appreciate it, and I think that's the right way to deal with it. And I think, you know, if I was to say, okay, philosophically speaking now, no science, but philosophically, if there is a God who is that powerful to create everything we see and do everything that we experience, he's not my peer. I'm his creation. And so I do not dictate the terms upon which I approach him. 
like when I go to see, say, say I, I, I'm not I just so you know, I'm not trying to dictate terms. I'm just telling you something I know about myself is totally, that I totally. can't believe something unless there's no, evidence. No, I understand. For it. What I'm trying to tell you is that I, I accept that, okay. and I'm not challenging it. I'm just trying, from my perspective, like say yeah. I'm invited to Queen Elizabeth to to drink tea. Right. The queen, right? Okay. So I probably get a letter, and they probably tell me this is how you're to dress, this is how you're to address her. This right. is the well, security. well, just to say, I, I would All turn that down because the idea of a queen is despicable. Whatever. Worse than the idea of a god, but okay. I, I might agree with you there. Right, right, right. With, with the queens and kings, but God yeah. puts authorities in places, so we obey. God puts them. Um, what I would say is there's probably a protocol that I will need to follow to approach her on her terms. Now, whether I like it or not, it doesn't right. change the thing. Right, right. I can't just waltz into Buckingham Palace and say, hey, let me yeah, that's what's true. Going you'll be on. I would be like arrested, you know, there's right. like guards. Yeah. And so, assuming there's a God who is almighty and all powerful, all wise and everything, I cannot go to him and say, this is how I'm choosing to, but me, that's me. Well, I, I hear where you're coming from, and I know that you sincerely want to see something, so I will pray that he reveal himself to you. Now, how he does that, that's up to him. What's meaningful to you, what will speak to you, I don't know. So I'm not going to cage it in like... Oh, no, yeah, and I'm not that saying that you should pass yes, the message to God or anything. I was just and he's listening as if you say... If he's exactly, listening. he would have heard anyway. Exactly. That is, if God, I, if God wanted us to believe in him, he would have presented more convincing evidence for us to do so. I, I like where you're coming from. I like this. These sincere, honest, this is where I'm at. Fantastic. Fantastic. Let's start approaching. In, in my mind, you, you present that to God and say, I am who I am, and I believe what I believe. I, I live the way I live. I think what I think because of all of this. All right? So... Help me sort through it and help you God sort through it to arrive at the source, mm -hmm. which I believe, according to the Bible, which I believe is true, is God. Right? Yeah. So, anyhow, it was, I got to go in and meet with some folks, but it was a pleasure to talk to you, uh, Aaron, and I'll pray both of you. All right? Have a good day.